that has to be one of the most frustrating games of uh, my coaching career for sure. Um, a lot of reasons for that, but um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we weren't good enough to to overcome uh, the difficulties that Toronto presented us and other factors in the game. Um, I do want to make sure that I acknowledge uh, Joe Bendick uh, for Toronto was uh, ridiculous in goal today. Um, you know, he, he kept a minute on so many occasions, and um, I didn't even see it until I just looked at the stat sheet, but he has nine saves on goal. Um, so good day for, for him and um, you know, us. we got to do a better job there. So. Yeah, this is one of those games where a draw feels like a loss. Um, definitely feel like we, we scored a goal there. Um, I know what what I was told on the sidelines, and then what I see on the what I saw live and what I saw on the replay are completely opposite. So, um, but you can't. Can't do anything about that. You know, that is what it is. And um, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta take your chances and finish them. We didn't do a good enough job on that. It seemed in the first half you guys were playing a lot of long ball, and then you got a lot more possession and a lot more chances when you switched to a more possession oriented game. Which is which is the future of this team? Look, we're not a long ball team. All right. Um, that game in the, at halftime, the stats were much more possession oriented. You know, right now in the first half we had the ball sixty six percent of the time. So I mean I don't know what to tell you, but I think we, we had it more than they did. It was just a terrible, ugly game. Um, it was a restart game between some tactics by Toronto and some interesting um, management of somebody else on the field. Uh, it was just a game that was stopping and starting the whole time. And, and it continued to do that throughout the whole game. So that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, as a coaching, and I, I know the players feel it too, very frustrated by the, the way the tempo and rhythm of the game unfolded. John, around the hour mark, the game starts holding up a fair amount. you got to start getting some chances and all the stuff around. Get you the soccer punch going the other way. How disappointing was it? Was it to see the back line, just even for a moment, Take one back step and it comes up. You know, we talked about it all week that, that that was what this team does and they do it well. You know, um, you can be all over them and they've had this situation again and again uh, throughout this season where they they're under siege a little bit and then they they get you know an opportunity and, and they hurt you and and that's why they are doing as well as they have right now and, and they're certainly playing to their strengths. And, you got to give them full credit for that because we knew that that was a possibility the whole time. Um, that's a that's a crazy situation for our back line to deal with. You have a guy that's probably 15, 20 yards offside. So when you, as a defender, you take your first look and you're like, the guy's offsides, but he walks away and then the guy runs from, you know, onsides. And it's, you know, I know that's the rule. Our players know this rule. But when you're in the game in the, that situation, there's no question that that's extremely difficult to deal with. John, when you look at the way that you're uh, that attack is today, Seth O'Connor and Jack Clay have, how well did they interchange and what did you see from them? Um, I don't think it was uh, as much our, our front three as our whole team struggled to kind of um, execute our game plan. Uh, our possession wasn't the way that we wanted to do it. Um, even though we had more of the ball, uh, our rhythm and our tempo wasn't what we had planned on. Again, you got to give a lot of credit to Toronto for that. Um, some other mitigating factors, wink, wink. And um, you know, but I think it's a struggle anytime you you have to play under those kind of conditions, and it just goes on and on. Yeah, you know, something more like a physical lineup uh, going up front. Are you expecting Toronto to come out like that? I mean, that, you know, Toronto, we've seen Toronto, and they've done this to their opponents all year, and it, it's a credit to them. It's not, from my standpoint, you know, I don't coach Toronto. I, I have to give them uh, full credit for, for the way they play and, and the pieces that they have and what they do. They do it very well. Um, you know, a 
I would go back again to say that our our thought going into this game is that we needed to dictate the, the possession. We needed to dictate the tempo and, and rhythm of the game. On the stat sheet, that you know says we did, but in reality, it's, it's such a weird game. You couldn't really get any rhythm going in it. So very frustrating. Okay, when you talk about that rhythm, as many times as there was a stoppage of play, can you talk about what that does for a team that's trying to build momentum, much like you guys were in the late in the second half? It just kills it, um, and it's it's a tactic, okay? Um, to be very blunt about it, it's a tactic, and it's it, it was used very effectively today. Um, again, I'm not attacking that tactic at all. I understand it, but it's you know when you're trying to get a game going and you're trying to establish things, and it stops and starts, and and little things, you know, when you you think that you're ready to play, and all of a sudden, you know, you're not playing because there's another player down, or there's a ball on the field, or the referee, you know, blows his whistle and stops. I mean, all these little things just stop, start, stop, start, and it's it, it's very disruptive. Okay, and I, and I personally don't like that. You know, if I, you know, I'm not a fan of it. John, um, you had a lot of chances today. What about Benedict? If he were just normal, he probably would have scored three to four goals. Yeah, Mark, I started off the press conference by oh. saying that. Joe Bendick was amazing today for, for them. I, you got to give him a lot of credit. He makes some unbelievable saves. Um, you know, he's a young goalkeeper in this league. Uh, I was fortunate to have him in the under-17 residency program. I know his quality, um, but when it's on the line in an opposing stadium, he certainly had a very good day. You got Clevers in there finally. You got, got Freitas himself a chance almost by moving down the field. At what point, and you talked for a while about trying to find that way to integrate him, what point did he say, I'm ready to go? Cleverson's a, one of the best players I've been around in the short time that I've been around him. And he, uh, I think, understands that you come to work every single day, you, you do everything you can as a player to put yourself in a position to be selected. He never once has said, you know, hey, I'm coach, I'm ready. Or, you know, he just said, hey, whenever you're ready to put me in, I'm ready. So and that's what you want out of uh, any pro. John, it looks like Connor really inserted himself today. Is that what you're looking for from him? Yeah, um, you know, I would I would think he needs a, a little bit of help, not from guys on our team, but when when it, I mean, I thought he was fouled several times very early in the game, and he was fouled twice, in my opinion, so early in that game that the management of it may, maybe even switched a little bit than what we saw, and that's frustrating. But he's certainly that presence out there uh, that you see, uh, you know, and he's a he's sneaky too because he's a good soccer player. So he can do not only with his physicalness, but his technical and tactical ability.